Hi guys. So I am just logged in now. I'm going to wait a moment or two for you guys to come join me, try and live chat and talk to you about how I plan the trips that I plan. So I'm going to give it a moment for you guys all to find me. funny. Oh, wait, here we go. I'm about to watch myself and dun da da That's interesting. Okay, so I am now in the chat. So when somebody else joins me in the chat, then we're going to have some fun. Uh, since I realize this is being recorded, so some people are going to be watching it after the fact, um, I may end up repeating some of this, so I apologize if I do. Uh, but I uh, I have been going, if, if, if for my friends and, and family, I am known as the Disney person. Uh, I have been going pretty regularly. I purchased a timeshare a number of years ago. And through various issues, this is not a Disney timeshare. This was an outside company. I had some issues with the company when I purchased it. Uh, but learned the system really well and how to make it work for me. Uh, based on that, I then ended up uh, discovering that the time I had off every year was between Christmas and New Year's, uh, depending on when the weekends hit, basically from the 24th through uh, just before the New Year. And sometimes it was, uh, depending on the weekend, I might be able to start on the 22nd and go for a week. And other times I might only be, be able to leave at like noon on the 24th and then get up, get to the airport to take a plane and go from there. Hi, somebody's joined me. I am assuming this is a Mr. Drew, but I'm not positive. So please say hi. Uh, we are talking about how I plan the trips I plan. So I have been going to Orlando uh, between Christmas and New Year's for about 11 years now. Last year was my 10th year doing it. Yes. Yes. Um, it is saying hi. Hello, Mr. Drew. Uh, so every time or almost every time I've been taking a different person. Uh, the first two years I took one person. The next year I took another individual person. The year after that I took three people, uh, a couple, another singular person and myself. I've taken a family, mother, father, and 21-year-old daughter. I've taken a couple that's in their uh, late 50s, early 60s. I've taken uh, another uh, gentleman couple person about my age who may or may not identify himself. Um, and uh, each time I plan the trip differently. Uh, this year I am planning the trip for a mother, father, and an 11-year-old or 12-year-old, I think, by that time. So each time the trip is planned, it's a different experience. And one of my friends who's watched me do this for multiple years uh, said, you know, I'm just fascinated. Hiya, hiya Swarma, Swarna, sorry, Swarna. My eyesight is not what it used to be. Um, so each time I plan these, I discover something about, I, I evolve the trip, I make it different. So my goal for this live chat is to help you guys address questions on how you personalize or specialize the trip that you're going on for you. So the first thing that I do is find out the length of time that the people can go, you know, because that length of trip is going to be gauging you how many days you're going to go where and what things you want to do. And then I find out a generic list from the people. What is the one thing you must do when you go on this trip? You know, I have to go to Harry Potter World. I must go see Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I need to go on Pandora. I got to see Pirates of the Caribbean. It's been years. I haven't been in 20 years. I have no idea what I want to do. I always wanted to see the utilidors. Well, no, all of these things are options that people have said to me of the things they wanted to do on these trips. So that is, some people have to go to the Tiki Room, yes, um, and sing along and get Dole Whip or not. But uh, so everyone's trip is very different. And you find that out first. That helps you go say, that, so say your group says they have six days. That's great. And they say they must go to Harry Potter World. Must, must, must. And they also um, really want to do roller coasters. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, then you're going to look at 
how many days that means in each of the parks, how many times, you know, so if they're desperate to do Harry Potter world, you want at least two days at universal. Um, it can be done in one, but then you don't get to really kind of enjoy and take your time. So you, you do the two, maybe three, depending on how much they really want that. Um, so that's your initial gauge of what you're going to do It's the length of time. And there, I want to go to university Orlando because of X. Then with that in mind, you start taking other things into account while you plan your schedule. So it could be um, it, it, things you take in effect, their age and their health. Um, this tells you, are they going to be able to get up at eight o'clock or at six o'clock every morning, be at the park when it opens at eight and stay until it closes anywhere from nine o'clock to 1 a.m. Because some of the parks will do that. Or are they only going to be able to start at 8 a.m. and be done by 8 a.m.? You know, like if you're dealing with uh, with young children, you're going to want to take you're going to want to do a chunk in the morning, leave for a while, and do a chunk at the end of the day. Uh, because you're, if you're older, you could take a nap somewhere in the park. There are places to kind of chill, especially at Universal. But it changes. Um, based on the personal needs. Now, if you have an infant, there are baby care areas where the mom can go or the dad can go with said infant and chill in that baby area while older kids or, or adults go do something a little more raucous. Age also adjusts what activities you're doing. For example, if you've got a five-year-old, you probably shouldn't be doing drinking around the world just my opinion. You might stop and get a drink here or there, but your goal should not be getting an alcoholic beverage in every single country in Epcot or spending a huge chunk of your time going to all of the restaurants around the monorail and getting alcohol there. Uh, we'll see what that's going to be like. It will be stroller ECVs and a whole lot of people. So yeah, that's, I'm curious to see how they're going to adjust that Drew Galaxy's Edge, the, the stroller experience as he quoted it. Um, but you you really do need to, to account for their health. Also in terms of health, if they're significantly older, they may not be able to do as much walking. Uh, you know, the, one, the older couple I went with, one of them ended up having to do a wheelchair for a good chunk of the time. You know, are you going to rent an ECV? Are you going to try to bring one or are you going to rent the actual wheelchair? And that will adjust your timing as well. There are rides or things you can't do if you're in the wheelchair. You either have to be able to walk out of it. Like if you're permanently bound to the wheelchair, there are certain things you can't do. If you can get out of it and leave it somewhere and then come back for it, then you're fine. We've got a Sammy who's about to join me. So you've got a lot of variety. Come on, you can come up. And a lot of options on how you can do this. Um, so age and health, they're, they're, I, I'm, I like to think of it as the limitations. What are your limitations? How much time can a person, that particular group of people tolerate before they are just too tired, too exhausted, too whatever? Um, come here. Yeah, the day, the length, uh, how much time they can st could stand waiting in the line for something. Um, and, or, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let me stop for a sec. So the next thing you're gonna you're gonna do is the preferences, and the preferences break down to what rides they have to do, what food experiences they have to do, what uh, what if they want tours, you know, or are, are they into sit down entertainment? Are they into the history of things? <sighs> I can, I have done. Uh, Drew was saying that I'm a super being then I can do as much as anyone else could ever hope to do. I have, I have been known to be at rope drop at eight o'clock in the morning and be in magic kingdom when it closed at midnight or 1 AM. I've, I've done it and then gotten up and been ready to go and out the door at seven 30 the next morning to go to the next park. You know, uh, it's a little harder for me now than it used to be, but I absolutely, absolutely can do that. Hello, Sammy. Um, so what I often will do with the people I go with is I will sit them down and say, hey, here's the Disney website. Here's the Universal website. Just kind of scroll through and tell me what things really jump out at you. What must you do? What would you really like to do? And what things are, oh, dear God, no, 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 no. Um, write them down or get on the phone with me. And I will not break them if they, unless they want to be broken. You have to admit, we have done trips where your feet did not even hurt by the end of a day. 
just saying. Uh, if somebody new has joined us, please jump in and say hi. That may have just been Drew again. I'm not sure. But if you are here, please feel free to join in. Um, so, so you sit down with them and, and you get this list. And it can be a conversation or it can be a, thank you for that, uh, or it can be a, uh, an email or whatever, just so they tell you what those things are. And I'll keep those as a little document on the side. And then I start tracking out the days. So if I know someone really loves the roller coasters, I don't go on those. So I can either schedule them fast passes for some of the roller coasters while I could do something else. And I've done that. Or I might decide that that's when I want to go eat somewhere or that's when I want to go do something that I know they don't want to do. Um, so going through the types of things that they could have as preferences. Um, are they roller coaster fans? Like I said, I'm not. You know, do they want the latest, greatest, scariest, oh my God, flip you upside downiest rides? Then you know that that's their trick. Are they going to do water rides or not do water rides? You know, if the weather is appropriate, are they someone who is okay getting drenched? doesn't want to get drenched at all, doesn't want even want to get a drop of water on them. You got to figure those things out so you can plot and whether or not those rides are part of what you're doing. Um, or do they want the classics, the history? Do they want to do the people mover, which while it has started getting more and more crowded over the years, and I think it's because all of the locals keep saying it's one of their favorite rides. Um, it's, it's basically just sort of a, a, let's give you an overview of Tomorrowland and you sit and relax and watch it. And if you do it at night, and I will tell you this, most people don't think of this. I highly recommend my favorite time to do the people mover is at night because your eyes are already adjusted to more dark. When you do it in the middle of the day and you go into Space Mountain, you hear stuff. That's about it. If you go in at night, and your eyes have adjusted to the dark already because you've been walking around half in and out of light for a lot of what you're doing. When you get to that portion of the ride and you go into Space Mountain, you actually can start to see the cars moving around. You actually can start to see the lights moving around. It's fascinating. It's so much fun and it's much more interesting. Uh, every once in a while, I'll see some, one of the, the regular vloggers get online and go see that and see it and go, oh my God, I didn't know you could see that. Yeah, that's been my go-to. It's lovely in the day. It's better at night. Um, also, especially when I go during Christmas and the Christmas tree, the, the Christmas tree, the Christmas castle is lit up, uh, all dripped in ice. Then you get beautiful, beautiful shots of the castle. And it's a smoother ride. It's not like the safari where you're bumping everywhere, but you can actually see things. Um, so again, uh, types of rides they want to do. That's your, that's your first thing. The next thing is what kind of uh, entertainment do they like? Do they want fireworks? Must they see the parades? And I'm, you know, I, I'm, I don't mean like, oh, must they? I mean, but is that a must do for them? Uh, or sit down shows like an Animal Kingdom where you have Finding Nemo and the Animal uh, and the Lion King show or Rivers of Light, which isn't a fireworks show, but is a spectacular. Um, or, or, you know, is it that they go, oh, dear God, I have no desire to see a parade. Please keep me away from it. Again, the must do's or the, the dear God knows. Um, the... You know, do they only have they never been there? Is it their first time where you want to give them the overview of what the world is about? Have they been there, but it's been 10 years? Well, then, you know, there's a few classics they may want to see again, but there's a lot they're going to do that's totally new. Uh, or do they just want to try a whole different new experience? Um, somebody else has joined us. So if you want to jump in and say hi up, oh, there we go. Drew, your company is here. You've got your audience. So. So you've got to you've got to figure out for yourself which ones of those things are the things you want to have happen. What do you want to see? Um, once they tell you. Oh, and then the last is the specials. Is this a group that's all about the food? Is this a group that all, is all about the fancy food, the really amazing experiences that might cost more? Or would they want to do spa treatments? It's a spa day kind of thing that they're into. Or are they into tours? Do they want to do history or do they want to do backstage meeting the animals? Um, and okay, we're going to have, there's going to be a love fest in the chat right now between Drew and, and uh, Julie, and they can have their conversation. I will continue to talk for the people who are just watching this for info. Uh, when you guys actually have questions for me, just let me know. Um, so, Interesting, I suppose. Oh, uh, tours, or do they do they want to do the Void, which is the whole virtual reality Star Trek, or go do the Balloon at Disney Springs, where you get to go see everything. Uh, the Aqua Car at, at right by the Boathouse, where you can 
get into a car, sit in a car and the car drives around in the water. So all of these things are options. Find out by, com by talking with them, you find out what sparks your brain, what makes you really happy. And then you go from there and you see what else you, you start to map out the day. So to give you some examples, uh, when Drew and I went the, we're going to skip the first time. When we went the second time and it was just the two of us, we had, uh, we had um, decided to make it a foodie experience and a uh, relaxation. So we had a few days where I made him run like crazy. We did Universal early on at that trip because we were going to do one at the beginning, one at the end. And then we took in the middle of the trip on like the, the fourth day, I think it was, we did a chill day. And that was we woke up and, we, and I've mentioned this in some of the other live chats. We went to uh, the spa at Grand Floridian. We got facials, walked across the parking lot and had the afternoon tea at the Grand, at the Grand Floridian, finished tea, which was basically a nice lunch walked back across the parking lot, got massages, and then got dressed up and dolled up, you know, enjoyed the steam room, enjoyed the relaxation spaces, got back out and walked across the parking lot and had dinner at Victoria and Albert's, which is a four hour experience. And then left there, got the car out of valet because you could park it for free valet when you're doing Victoria and Albert's. And that was our day, we were done. Uh, yes, it was, <clears throat> Drew was commenting that his the first trip was memorable. And yeah, it was. Um, the, I, I'm going to be really generic with that one because this is a permanent public record. Um, that trip was the trip with a couple, another single, which was Drew and myself. And what we discovered upon getting down there is that the way that the couple wanted to travel and to experience things and the way that Drew and I wanted to travel and experience things was not coalescing. So I sat down with, with a part of the group and said, all right, here, so here's the plan. You're going to take the car this day. You're going to go do your thing. We're going to go. We, we had an event that we also were staying near SeaWorld because we stay at Hilton resorts normally. And, they, we would go and do our SeaWorld day because we had passes for SeaWorld, thanks to a really, a really wonderful friend. And they had the cars do whatever they wanted. And then the next day, they were going to do the SeaWorld day. They could stay in the timeshare because it had a kitchen if they wanted to do any kind of cooking or do whatever they wanted to do there. And then Drew and I took the car and we went and did more traveling stuff because this is really before Uber and Lyft were a big deal. You know, we would have had to have paid for much more expensive taxis. So at that point, that's how we got around it. And there was another day they weren't going to be going to the parks at all. They had another plan and they dropped us off at the parks. We did our thing. And then they picked us up at a certain point, a CEA world, but yes, yes, you could see a lot. Um, okay. We've got lots of comments here. Uh, personal conflict, personality conflicts. Yes. Drew was, Drew was there. Yes. Drew was part of that trip. Um, the first trip was also as a child was referring to Michelle. Yeah. Uh, my, my very first trip was actually at age seven was with uh, my 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 direct family and my father's sister and her family um and then the next time was a uh, high school grad grad school trip uh the next time was through meeting that i had in orlando where they were staying at the coronado springs the event was there so we went twice then um and then it's really been these trips since then that i really focus on because i wasn't really plotting or planning any of those. I mean, truthfully, when I go my, by myself in the parks, because there's so many rides I can't do, I will end up, I can do all four parks in two days and see everything I really want to see. Um, I'm actually doing a trip in June. That'll be a partial day, uh, like an evening, uh, where I'll probably just do Disney Springs. And then three days in the parks and maybe a partial day. And I've already plotted it out with breaks going to some resorts to eat at some restaurants I wanted to try and some Disney Springs time. And I'm, I'm done everything I want to do. And I might even do a side shoot to you, uh, the new Hagrid ride over at universal because I'm going to have the leeway to do that. I mean, I'm so while there are tons of things I do like to do, it is extremely, I, I am, it's not as essential to me, you know, trying to get to certain things. Uh, I went to school with, yes, ride on the rapids, ride at Bush Gardens. Yes, we did ride the rapids ride. I love rapids rides, 
Julie, actually. It's it's one of my favorites. So I, w I am a water rights person. I'm not super fond of flumes anymore because of the drops, although I can tolerate some of them. Um, but yeah, the, the rapids rides, the Kali River Rapids and all that. And yes, we have a picture of all of us drenched after that ride. I have that um, with, with a number of our classmates. Uh, we did a day at Wet n Wild because it existed back then. We did grad night where actually I went off by myself because I wasn't getting along with everybody. Uh, we did a day in Epcot or two thirds of a day in Epcot in which I walked around by myself most of the time. Um, so yeah, it's, it, and then we did an evening at, oh, medieval times, which I, I sat with the group and then spent a lot of time when we did a dance party afterwards by myself, which is a whole long story. Yeah. It, I, I just, we got kicked out of medieval times. I don't remember that. Uh, I got, I mean, we, we had the dance thing and then they, I guess they eventually let us out. I was not in the room with everybody while they were doing stuff. I was sitting in a coat closet. We, we leaving that one here. Um, uh, I see. I, yeah, I love rapids rides. I absolutely do. You'll, uh, because this is a public venue, uh, let's not put it all up here, Miss Julie. But we will. Uh, I will be curious to hear that story in a in a different location, um, because yeah, I knew none of that. Absolutely none of it. And so that is that is a shame if if someone was that stupid. Um, all right. So back to the story at hand and planning and plotting. So you kind of look at your chunk of your day, and you discover whether someone is an early person or a late person, or if they know, yeah, I could go late, but I'm, I need a break. I know I'm going to need a break. And then you plot out, all right, I go to a site called Undercover Tourist and I look at where they recommend the crowd levels are going to be based on prior experience, day of the week, et cetera, and which parks they expect to be the busiest and the least busy. And if you can, you then say, all right, these are the day you just, I put them in a chart, I put them in a spreadsheet. These are the days that these would be the better parks to go to. And it may not be the way you end up going, but it tends to help you kind of suss out what you need to do. I, I did not think you stole anything, but okay, good, Julie. Uh, so, um, so do you guys have actually any questions about the planning process? I, I know you're having your your lovely chat there, but I'm just kind of curious if if you've ever looked at or if anyone. And if people are following this and watching this after the fact, please go ahead, you know, and and uh, and like this if if it's helped you. Uh, subscribe if you want to follow this and know when these come up because I I do these kind of randomly. Um, also, you know, put your questions down at the bottom, and that way I can help you out and answer them. You know, if you follow up and put a question or a comment after the fact. Um, okay, Julie asked if you really have to plan or if you can just kind of go in. I don't think commando is the exact word I'd use, but yeah. Um, for universal, you really, you could get away with not planning. You would still want to kind of gauge for yourself, get there really early. And you always want to, if you can get there early, especially if like, if you're staying on property with, they let you in before the general populace, you can get a number of good rides done before the crazy happens. For Disney, unfortunately, at this point, you really do need to plan. It doesn't have to be within an inch of its life, but if you want to make sure that you get on those those hard to get on rides that you want more than anything or to get to the restaurants that you know you want to try, you can't just walk up to restaurants anymore. Sit down restaurants. It is almost impossible, especially if you're doing Christmas week. You know, there are other times of the year where it's not so bad, but really well and truly, if you want to do a sit down restaurant, you kind of need to. Now, if you don't want to sit down for restaurants anywhere and you just want to do like the fast food places, uh, as long as you get the My Disney Experience app on your phone. You can do mobile ordering at a lot of them, which saves you time where you, you basically get on your phone. This is the restaurant I want to order. You order your food, you pay through the app on your phone, you know, with whatever credit card you want to tie to it. And then once you walk up to the area, you click I'm here and they make your food. So instead of standing and I'm, I, you know, even, even in good times and bad times, it's been kind of crazy. Um, but I've done, I've done that where I walked up. It was like a Hollywood toy story area. We ordered the mobile ordering. The food I needed was done in about less, about four minutes. And there were people that were standing in line that hadn't, you know, that had been, they were there for a lot longer because they stood in line because they didn't put it through their phone. So mobile ordering does make a big difference. It does save time. Um, 
if you don't care about the food, if you're perfectly okay with missing out on that ride you wanted to get on, yeah, you could play it by the skin of your teeth. But I highly recommend at least doing fast passes. Um, if you're not staying on property, it's 30 days out. If you're on staying, staying on property, it's 60 days out. Um, and you can, if you're staying on property, if you're staying safe for a week at, at 60 days out, you can book the entire week. Whereas if you're, excuse me, off property, you can book the first day's fast passes on the first day, the second day's fast passes on the second day. So you have to keep getting up at seven o'clock in the morning. And yes, you want to get up at seven o'clock in the morning. If there's something hard to get, for example, if I'm staying on property or even off, pro well, off property, it's going to be impossible. But if I'm staying on property and I want to go to galaxy's edge when it opens in December, I better be there at 6.59 going in, logging in, and ready to start grabbing my fast passes because there's no way I'll see them otherwise. Uh, what do we got here? Not a Christmas yet. If you don't care where you eat or if you don't care about the rides. Um, if you don't have a smartphone, when you get to the park, you do have the ability to go over to kiosks throughout the park and book fast passes. Or if you have a computer, you can actually go onto the uh, Disney website and you can book your fast passes that way too. Uh, you just need to have a ticket before you can start booking fast passes and you can buy your ticket online as well. So you can, you could pre-book all your fast passes here on your computer, go there, and then you could change them at the park. Uh, and they, you basically you would scan your ticket and that's how you would do it. Now, uh, the other thing that they have, which is very helpful is a uh, magic band. Uh, this is not one of them, but it's similar. You know, you have a little wristband on and it ties your tickets. You pre-tie your ticket to it. If you have the photo pass, it ties your photo pass to it, the memory maker. If you have fast passes, they're all tied. And then you don't have to be pulling things out. You literally just, here's my wrist. Go ahead, scan, go. Go ahead, scan, go. Your ticket is there. Your fast passes are there. Your, I mean, I don't know that your dining reservations are there. You know, that's why I use the app. But, you know, I mean, I suppose they could check something that way. Uh, it could, it could, if you don't like to have sun marks, you could keep switching arms. Uh, but I mean, it's also your, the other thing is it's your room key. If you're staying on property that will, that you can use that to unlock your tickets, your uh, doors, hopefully with a permission who does have a smartphone. There you go. Um, now, uh, if you have a disability, a physical disability, uh, a um, autism spectrum type disability, a uh, health disability. There are different ways that Disney will help you. Um, if you have someone with you who is, who absolutely freaks out from enclosed spaces, meaning if they had to stand in line with a bunch of other people and all the ambient noise, they would have a conniption fit and freak out and not be able to do stuff, have a breakdown, exactly. You can go to the front de the front desk areas of each of the resorts. You have to. You really only have to do it at one. Once you, I'm not resort the um the park itself, uh, at Magic Kingdom or whatever, and go up to them when you get there for the first day and say, "Here's the deal. This is her issue. This is what we have to. You know, this is where where our concerns are." And they will give you if it's something where they cannot stand in line. It's not like, "Oh, my leg is is broken. I need to be in a wheelchair." If that's the case, they will give. Then, they're the most of the lines are good for wheelchairs, and if they're not, then you can you can have a comeback time. If you have something where you physically cannot be standing in line that long, then what you do is you go to them, and they will give you a pass, which they will link into your your link your entire par party onto the dis onto the um, magic band, and then if you guys want to go and do a ride together, but it's too long a wait. You go up there, you say, this is the group. These are the people. You scan the person with the disabilities wristband. And then they will look at your party and go, okay, so you've got these four people. Are they all going on the ride? Okay, come back in an hour. And then you can go do other stuff and be away from that space. And in an hour, you can go back in and you can actually do the ride. Uh, we did end up doing that with Drew for some other reasons uh, where he just really couldn't be in the line for the length of time for, for sort of short-term emergencies. So it allowed us to shorten the wait time for a lot of things. So you could actually, we, we could, if there was a shorter line for something else nearby, we could go in, find out that we have to come back in an hour for that ride or an hour and a half for that ride. In the meantime, we could go ride another ride. We could go get something to eat. Yeah, guest relations. And it's it's quite wonderful. Um, I have never used the back end. Oh, you, oh you're talking about 
uh, the international gateway for the back entrance. Is that what you mean, Julie? Um, it ends up still getting a little crowded uh, depending on the time of year. Yeah. The international gateway, if you're staying at one of those properties is great. Or if you get dropped off at one of those properties and you can just walk in, um, it is quieter. But I have noticed, especially during like the food and wine festivals and things like that, it's starting to get more crowded there as well. But like end of the day, when when Drew and I were going out there, it was not bad at all. It was very comfortable. Um, exactly. Yes, you're exactly correct. That's why I said you have to scan the, the the magic band of the person with the disability. And then as long as they're going on that ride, then the other people can do it. Uh, if the other people in the party want to do it, then, you know, do a ride. They they can wait in line or you guys get fast passes in advance and, and do the traditional fast pass style. Yes, it is a lot less at the front gate. Um, if you're an annual pass holder, there's a shorter line there as well. Uh, the problem, though, with that is you have to be able to park or or get dropped off at one of those resorts on that line. Um, otherwise, you're, you're not going to be able to, to go through that entrance. Now, I mean, technically, I guess you could park at Hollywood Studios, take that boat ride from Hollywood Studios all the way to Epcot and walk through the International Gateway that way. Uh, but if that's not the case, you have to stay at the Swan, the Dolphin, the Beach Club, um, the boardwalk and there's another one in there and it might be the yacht club uh, but if you're staying at one of those then it's possible um any other uh, questions that you guys have in terms of planning or plotting or how i do the foo i do um but yeah so I'll, i basically make a spreadsheet that continues to change uh i do the here's the dream plan if we got everything we wanted and we gave you every experience you wanted to have the ride the spa the tour the whatever then I would schedule that aloud. Um, gondolas will change for certain resorts, but not all of them. It will be Pop Century and Art and Animation, Caribbean Beach Resort, and there may be one other. There's another one in there. I'm not looking at the map. There's a map where you can see what they all are. Um, and it's not a T. It's actually, I, I re-looked at the map after the last time we had a live chat, and it's it's cutting well but it, it's still only hollywood studios to epcot for the park to park on that if you want to go epcot to magic kingdom you do the monorail epcot to hollywood studios you want to you can do the gondolas or you can do the boat um animal kingdom is its own little world it's not really connected other than by buses to the other parks um that's that's the one thing i'd love to see change is is to have a, an easier connectivity from that park to the others um but you can bus bus to bus, or, you know, bus park to park, or bus park to resort. Uh, and in the afternoons, like after four o'clock, I believe you can do uh, Disney Springs to park. But normally, it's just Disney Springs to resorts. Uh, and the the Disney Springs opens at ten o'clock, I believe, like ten to midnight. At some point, I thought it was open till two, but it's not. City Walk was open till two a.m. But again, that's Universal, and again, has that kind of more adult energy to it. Um, so yeah, so I do that first dream chart. This is in a perfect world. If you wanted absolutely everything you wanted based on the times I'm seeing, based on the things that they have seen in history, this is how we do it. Then six months out comes. And for Disney, it's six months out. That's when you can actually book the tours and hope they haven't been filled up. And you can book your dining reservations uh, for those must-do restaurants. Like right now for the trip I'm doing in June, um, I didn't book all of the reservations. I booked some, but when it comes six months out for, for my Christmas trip, I will, every morning we'll be getting up and booking those reservations for the nights we're not staying on property because that is the longer you wait, the harder it is. Now there are some places that don't book up, uh, but if you want Cinderella's Royal table to eat in the castle, if you want, um, let me think of some of the other ones that really go. Uh, be our guest for lunch, for dinner. And truthfully, for, even for lunch or breakfast, if you want to do those, the, that one tends to book up very quickly. On occasion, you can find a last minute reservation. Like day of, get on at seven o'clock in the morning and something may pop up. And that's another reason why having the smartphone or having the app is really useful. But again, if you don't, if you have your laptop with you and you're in the properties, you can do it. Uh, I would assume if you have concierge and you're staying on property, you could probably book it that way too. But otherwise you're, you're looking at trying to, you're trying to hope that something's available. 
Christmas week specifically, but in general, from everything I've been hearing from these other people, you cannot count on getting a sit down dining reservation if you're trying to do a day of. Sometimes you can. Sometimes the less popular places are. And if you're going to a resort to eat, you have a better chance. And you, again, you always have quick service. You know, uh, the poor, the resort that we stayed at, Sasagula, was the food place. And there were like four or five different places, types of foods you could get, et cetera. But if you, and then you take your food and you sit down with it. But if you don't want cafeteria style, if you want to sit down and be served, it is best to try to pre-book those reservations, even at Disney Springs, you know, um, unless you want to sit at the bar, which with kids is not always the best plan. Uh, it just makes it easier. You know, three days out when we were there for Christmas or even one day out, we're going, hey, maybe we could try to change the time on this reservation. Mm -mm. No, no. Um, especially if you want to eat at a normal time. If you want to eat at 4 p.m. for dinner or lunch, or you want to eat at like 9 p.m., you've got a chance, but it's a lot harder. You know, it is not impossible. I've seen it happen more so, like I said, at the resorts and in the parks. Um, in terms of restaurants in the parks, if you're looking at Magic Kingdom, Jungle Skipper Canteen is usually easier to get into, which I love because it's one of my favorites. Um, and then if a restaurant doesn't have a good reputation. Now, I, I've recently heard that the Mexican restaurant inside the pavilion is not as horrible as it used to be. Um, it had a really, really bad reputation for the longest time. And a couple people have gone there recently and they've liked it. Um, so I am curious to see if that has changed, if that's gotten any better. And I, I might break down and do it when I'm by myself, you know, um, as an in, okay. Yeah. See, and, but now the people who've been saying that it doesn't suck or not suck as much have seen, gone there in the last two, three months. So it could be a new chef. It could be something new they're doing. Um, but it had a bad reputation for a long time. Um, so yeah, so I mean, uh, Julie, she missed your question. How many new things do we try? Oh, in each trip, um, it, it, it varies with the people. You know, if I get someone who wants to go and they go, oh, these restaurants all look really cool and they're places I've been to, or they say, I like this type of food. Can you find this type of food? You know, I want to eat Asian food. I want to eat uh, just Chinese food or burgers only, then I'll pick those places based on that. I do a number of the same places because they're really good because I can recommend them. But on this next trip that we're doing uh, or that I'm doing, I'm going to homecoming, which I haven't done before. I'm going to Sanaa, which I haven't done before. I'm going to, all right, so I'm going to actually pull up my spreadsheet because that'll allow me to do that for this current trip. That's, I want the June trip. There we go. So this is just my trip. So currently I have Homecoming, which is the Art Smith restaurant. I'm going to Skipper Canteen again. Again, that might change, but that's where I am right now. Uh, I am doing the Tea at the Grand Floridian. I haven't been in about two or three years. Uh, I've done it twice, but it's been a little while. And it's sort of a more of kind of a, a, a open floppy, uh, floppy is not the right word, but a kind of an open flip floppy kind of choice. Um, and then I actually have not plotted a dinner that day at all. It's It looks like it's going to be at Hollywood Studios. And I'm not fond of most of the food places there where they've got bad reputations. You know, I don't want to pay $70 to do a sit down with Mickey and Minnie there. Uh, I can get better food at Tusker House if I wanted to do that kind of a sit down. Um, but the Hollywood Brown Derby has a lounge outside that I've only gotten drinks at before. And I've looked at that menu and there are things there that are similar or the same as the restaurant that would be cheaper. So I may not do the whole sit down. I may just go and take my chances and hit the bar there and, and, and sit down and have dinner there. Um, then I'm actually going to try the Hacienda, uh, the, uh, looking at Hacienda San Angel. No, oh, no, wait, take that back. I'm looking at the Mexican restaurant outside, which I have eaten at. It's been about four years since I've eaten there but I'm not going to be doing lots of eating and drinking around the world before beforehand. So I, the last time I did not give it a, while I liked the food, I was not hungry enough to really enjoy it. So um, Drew actually enjoyed the tea that we added champagne to the tea that he and I did. Um, but he can tell you his own opinion of it. Uh, and my last day, I have not picked any restaurants because until I know what my flights are, I'm not sure that that's going to make a difference for me. Um, 
And I am going to go back to Nomad's Lounge because gluten-free churros, oh, dear God, that was amazing. But that's a snack. That's not my lunch. So I'll go get, you know, a, a little something to eat there and as part of my day. But, you know, like if I look at what I'm doing at, at Animal Kingdom, I'm doing safari. I'm going to do the water ride. I'm going to do dinosaur. I'm going to go to Nomad's. I might go do photo ops at Pandora. I don't need to do the rides. You know, if I can get a really fast, easy in on, on the, the boat ride, I might do that. But none of that is anything I am so dying to do that I must, must, must do it at that point. Um, yeah, well, actually, I, now, now, Drew, the tea was, well, it was, it was not our dressier meal. I mean, we were there in, you know, jeans and, and button down shirts or jeans. And I think I had like a sweater or something on. Um, it was the evening when we did Victoria and Albert's where we got the all dressed up. Um, but it was, it was just, it was a chill, relaxing day. Again, no rushing to rides, no running around. The most painful thing I did to myself is I put heels on to go do the fancy dinner. Um, but all we had to do was just walk across a parking lot once and then to the car for the valet. So it was, it was not a big deal. Um, but so, yeah, so in food, uh, and then uh, the first night after we do the homecoming, uh, I'll probably go hit Raglan Road and the Edison for some other, you know, cool, interesting things to do. But that's very vague. Now, when I go in Christmas time, uh, since I'm going with someone who's younger for the first time, we're looking at going to the 50s Primetime Cafe, which is there's a TV playing 50s TV shows, and you have uh, the, the staff are your cousins and they are there to tell you, you know, take your elbows off the table. If you go to the bathroom, they're going to ask you what color the soap is. And if you don't know the color of the soap, they're going to make you stand in the corner and sing, I'm in a little teapot because you're a liar. You must not have washed your hands. So they do all this kind of picking on you stuff. And uh, my guess is from listening at this is that they pick more on the adults than the kids. Um, but it's sort of a fun entertainment, silly thing. Um, it was our down day. Yes, you are correct. It was our down day. Sorry, I just saw that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you, you find out what they need to do and then you kind of time it out. Uh, so like I said, the first deadline is the tour day and the meal day. That's, and that's, uh, 180 days out. Then at 60 days out, if you're staying on property or at 30 days out, if you're not staying on property, that's when you'll do your fast passes. And that's when your, your schedule truly becomes tentatively set. And that's the best way I can put it is you have a set schedule. This, this is the game plan of what we're going to try to do to get everything done. At that time, you also can start booking reservations for the restaurants at Universal, uh, unless they're on open table. If something's on open table, you can book it early, but they've started moving everything into the Universal website. Uh, I don't know that you can make reservations through the Universal app, but you can do it through the Universal website. And that's when you can book uh, Vivo and Cowfish and uh, the restaurants inside the parks. You cannot book a reservation for Toothsome uh, if you are of have a group of the appropriate age that you do not that you can sit at the bar. I highly recommend that as your option, simply because if you have to wait for a table, it's a chocolate themed restaurant and it's steampunk themed, and the lines get crazy for lunch for dinner time and lunch time and all that. Um, Hard Rock Cafe, uh, Hard Rock Hotel, no, Hard Rock Cafe. I've done that one and that one's not too bad. Uh, then you'll end up with uh, the resort restaurants there too, where you can get, take a boat or, you know, go in distance to get to one of those. And I've done one of those, which was pretty nice. <laughs> I like tooth, toothless, but no toothsome is a steampunk themed restaurant. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the alcoholic beverages are great. The shakes are amazing. They have like piece, like if you get a key lime pie shake, there's a piece of key lime pie on the top of the shake. And the shake is, you know, one of those like Mason, it's a plastic mason jar. Um, I got the Nutella shake there once, which was the safest I could be for gluten free. But they've got like peanut butter one with with peanut butter uh, Reese's pieces and cookies in it, and peanut butter sticks coming. I mean, it's like it's it's crazy. They're they're not cheap, but they are oh dear god. Well, you don't have to eat the Nutella shake. I happen to love it. You can have one of the other shakes, like the birthday cake shake or the red velvet cake shake. Um, where you get a cake on top of your Sunday, or like I said, the alcoholic beverages are pretty good. Um, the food was amazing when we started going there. It was less good this last time. Um, 
Like Mexican and Epcot, I do have to see to some overcome the food service. Absolutely. Yeah. The first year we really, really was terrific. The food was absolutely wonderful. We sat at the bar. The service was great. The, the second time I went back, the service was okay. The food was okay. Uh, and uh, There was a Brussels sprouts appetizer that was to die for when I went the first time. And then I went back and got it again and it was not good. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just not good. It was really decidedly average and, and not exciting, which was disappointing. Cause I do usually love that. Do they have pie? Um, they, I don't know. I, I do not have like, I'm going to use this and look up the menu if I can. Um, but I do not know if toothsome has pie. They are chocolate. I want the menu. Um, I do enjoy some pies. I wish I could have enjoyed them. Man, you know, I got to tell you that way, way back when the, uh, I know they do a pot of creme and or a creme brulee that's chocolate. I remember that. So you've got your, oh dear God, shakes, which I'm going through. They have a banana cream pie shake. They have a apple pie shake. They have one that's called, oh no, that's a sundae. Apple pie streusel, apple pie filling, vanilla ice cream, cinnamon sugar pie crumble. So it's sort of a, a deconstructed shake. Um, bread pudding, they do a chocolate cream pie, a potted chocolate cream, a chocolate creme brulee, a classic French chocolate mousse. It is themed mostly for chocolate. And then, like I said, the shakes that so they have a key lime pie, which is sour cream, ice cream, sweet condensed milk, lime juice, lime sugar, and a lime garnish. And that's one of the specialty shakes. And it you, uh, sometimes has had a piece of cake on the top of it or the pie. So well, Toothsome's probably not for you if you don't like chocolate. That That's pretty much, it is Toothsome's Chocolate Emporium. They put cocoa nibs in some of the regular foods. So there's, it's it's very heavily chocolate themed. So mm -hmm. if, if chocolate is not your thing, probably a place you want to skip. Um, if you like sushi, if you like burgers, go to Cowfish. It is a burger slash sushi restaurant. They have burgushi, they, which is burger fillings made into sushi shapes. Um, and wrapped and Drew's had those. They have sushi, they have good burgers and fries. Um, yes, I, I just read that. Oh, you're now you're catching up where I was doing the desserts. Too funny. Um, so uh, yeah, and, and looking at the restaurants in these, you could do the key lime. Okay, chocolate restaurant near my house in Virginia. I want to go to that restaurant, Julie. I realize you're not a chocolate fan, but I have posted pictures of that place. I want to try that place at some point in my life. Um, Burgushi was quite fun actually, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, um, it's, it's all about plotting and planning based on the needs of your, of your people. And because I know I'm going back, I'm not the, oh my God, how dare you? Now, if a new ride has opened, I will try to put that on the schedule, uh, unless it goes upside down and then it's up to the other people if they want to try it. Um, I, but I, I try to add that one new thing in on top of whatever else goes with the game plan. And there will be a couple times where I've done, where I've scheduled, they want to do the roller coaster. I've scheduled them on the roller coaster. And then I scheduled myself for the little mermaid show or for the frozen sing along or something that I won't get sick on. Um, and they may not want. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I've been, I've been dying to try that place. I, I have another friend who is can, we talked about taking me there for my birthday with a year and a half ago. No, actually, almost two years ago. So well, it, it may happen. So yeah, absolutely, we can touch base on that. Absolutely. Um, so we're at about fifty minutes now. Uh, I've gone through the most of what I wanted to talk about. You know, like how, how to schedule the parades, the fireworks. You know, so you know which parks you need to be at, and yeah, you just you build your schedule based on what happens. Now, please understand when you build that schedule. Like I'll build the schedule based on the fireworks times they give you, or the hours they say the park is open. Two weeks before Christmas, they change their hours. And that's uh, universal. If you go on the website right now and you see the hours they have listed, those are their hours. I could tell you today what their Christmas hours are going to be. They don't change. It is set. But if you go to Disney, they'll change the hours based on the crowds and based on, I guess, their booking and based on what they expect is going to show up. Um yeah, things change a lot, as Drew said. And 
And yeah, rides changed. We've, you know, we thought we were going to see the galactic fireworks and then they last minute decided we're only going to show this specialty firework thing. So yeah, it, it, you just have to play it by ear. Um, and then on top of that, you have to just be ready for what changes. Uh, Drew got sick on this last trip. I got sick when we came home, but you know, so we had to adjust the schedule. We had uh, more times where I could let him sleep in a little. Um, you know, we uh, the one trip I took with the, the family, the first family, not the first family, but a, the first time I went with a family. Um, I wanted them up in the first thing in the morning to get on a, two or three rides that I knew were going to get too crowded later in the day. So we got there at rope drop and it was like, uh, I guess they dropped at nine that morning. We walked in, we got the three rides done. It was by 11. We'd already gotten coffee or something. And I looked at them all and I said, is there anything you really want to do? Because one had shin splints. The, the father was starting to come down with something. Uh, the, the mother and daughter were not getting along at that moment. And I looked at them and I said, okay, the next thing we actually have on our schedule is at two o'clock. That's three hours from now. Do you guys just want to go sleep in the car? We can do that. Yes, we can absolutely do that. You want to chill in the car? We don't have to be walking around right now. We don't have to be doing anything in particular. We can relax. Um, and yeah, there were other things I had. We can walk to this place. We can go try this thing but they were not essentials to their list. That's why it's important to know what their essentials are. So you don't cut them out of something they want to do. So once I, we did that, we, they were like, yeah, let's do that. We got back to our car, the skies opened up and poured torrential rain for about an hour while we slept in the car. Um, and we chilled and we hung out and it was lovely. Um, but you have to be willing to change. Uh, there was a, another vlogger I just recently started watching Sam Mealy and uh, he, his plan, he was very funny. He was like, Make your plan. Make a very specific plan of what you want to do. Now, he was talking for solo tra travelers. But in general, you make your plan and then throw it out the window. Um, and I don't totally throw it out the window, again, because of the fast passes, etc. I got sick on the trip last year. Stuck in the hotel. Yeah, for over a week. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <sighs> that, yeah, ER visits are not good. Um, the trip, no, I've done it. I did a trip where I got sick as a dog. Uh, and ended up having to go to the um, the urgent care facility uh, and ended up on antibiotics. So, you know, there was a day where I just, and it actually happened two years in a row, where I sent my cohort out to do, here are the things that I'm recommending you do, here's your reservations and stuff, and I'm going to sleep. And I curled up in my bed and just slept and sweated the night away as I tried to get healthy. Um, you know, in California, you can get her home sooner. Oh, goodness, poor thing. Yeah, it's it's really horrible when you're traveling and you deal with sickness. But again, just be flexible and ready to throw things, you know, throw things out the window. Now, if you have to cancel a reservation last minute, uh, with the reservations for Disney, you have to give them 24 hours notice or you get charged $10 per person who's supposed to be in the reservation. Um, they're, they're okay with going around it. Like uh, one of the trip that trip where we did that day sleeping in the car, I started, something went seriously wrong toward the end of the trip, toward that that day. And I was concerned to the point where I almost thought I had to go to the ER. It was, or something kind of severe. So my, uh, I headed toward the car cause I could barely, I mean, I could, I could get, I could not go any, like maybe more than about 50 yards before I had to find another bathroom or I had to find a place to sit or I had to find, it was bad. So the, the daughter of the group went running off to tell the restaurant that we had to cancel. And they said, well, normally we have to charge you for that. And she went, hi, yeah, we're going to the emergency room. She went, never mind, canceled it out. No problem. You know, so they're, they're not unhelpful. Um, the, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you just kind of work as a team and you, as long as you know what your long-term goals are. And once you know, you've done what the things that the person did, really, really wanted to do, and you've gotten some of the things they'd really like to do, you're good. And just try not to put them on the things they hate. You know, uh, we, I go on into small world cause it's really cool, but I know a lot of people who don't like that, or I will send people on roller coasters and I will not do them myself because roller coasters. Um, I will attempt some of them once I have done just about every ride at Disney once I have not done mission space orange because I know better. Um, I think that's the only one I haven't done. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, I haven't done the Triceratops spin just because I've been told it's really rough. I, you know what the heck? I might try it while I'm there this time because 
why not? Um, and just see what it's like. Um, but that's about it. I've, I've, and, and now at Universal, I have not gone on Rock and Roller Coaster. Uh, I'm sorry, Rip Roaring Rocket. I have not gone on the Hulk. I have not gone on. Are those the only two? Uh, I have not gone on Fear, uh, Doctor Doom's Fear Fall. I have not gone on Storm's Celatron because it's a spin spin ride. So you know, there are just things you know better. Well, see, now I've had people seen video of people on it, and it's when it hits its corners, it gets rough. It just it shakes you up. Uh, so back issues and things like that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And I, I've, I've actually known someone who rode the Hulk in 40 degree weather and got off and just, yeah, I mean, I, it's almost like his face got freezer burned. He was just like, why did I do that? Even in his heavy winter coat, why did I do that? Um, but I just, I know better than to go into upside down rides because I know what they do to me. You know, I made the mistake of going on uh rock and roller coaster once, once uh, I was done for the day at that point. I was just sick as a dog. I, I had to go get a bubbly soda and lay down. Um, when I did Mummy and when I did Expedition Everest, both of those, it was grab a bubbly soda and sit for a half an hour until I was ready not to puke. Um, Dr. Doom was, well, see, here's the thing. Free fall. I've done the Tower of Terror once. Um, and I did it because the storyline was so good. But I have a fear of falling. Let me clarify, not a fear of falling, but a fear of smashing and landing at the bottom of something to, you know, for my death. And I realized that these rides are not necessarily going to do that, but that's not what my brain says when I'm going through them. So I was on Tower of Terror and I was shaking so badly. My feet were literally bouncing this high off the ground. I was just, I was just a wreck, uh, a crying, a wreck. I got off the ride and went, I have done it. I'm not doing it again done. Uh, so I, I know better than not to do that. Um, and I'm sure fear fall was lovely. I'm not doing any of them. You can go on all of those as many as you want. Um, we do chocolate. She does falling. Okay. I accept that. I will eat all of the chocolate that Julie does not want. If she will ride all of the free fall rides that I will not get on. I like that plan. Um, I've done avatar twice. The, the flight of passage. I keep my eyes closed through a lot of it. Um, and I was told they've started doing some upgrades and Drew, you'll have to tell me if you remembered feeling this cause I could not tell. Um, you feel the breathing, which is supposed to feel in your thought at uh, your thighs. You, but you supposedly by your legs, by your ankles and your knees or something, you're supposed to feel the sensation of the beating of the wings. And I, I, maybe that's why I felt more. Maybe that was what the upgrade was, but they're constantly starting to rebuild and re-upgrade the different sections of the ride. And I learned that, which I thought was really cool. You will choose a lemon over chocolate. I like lemons. I like lemons with, with, you know, certain things. They're tasty. They're yummy. Um, okay. Oh yes. At the end. So I'm, I may, I'll see again as a single rider, I might be able to get a walk on fast pass at some point. I may make that my last day's thing. Um, and if I can manage to do it, maybe I'll try it. You know, I don't, I have yet to walk that line. Um, I would love to walk the line, but I'm not going to stand in line for an hour. So, I mean, I may be on a day where it's rainy or if I want to break down and spend the money to do the, um, the extra special evening activities, they have like three hours. You get all the ice cream, popcorn and sodas that you want. I think bottled water too. Uh, so it's like the Mickey bars, popcorn and, and beverage sodas. Um, and I think I saw hot dogs at one of them. Um, and then you can get on uh, any of the rides as much as you want that are open. So they, they cut off the safari. They cut off Kali right now because of uh, uh, refurbishments. Um, but yeah, so they have the, uh, the others available. I just noticed that took me off of there. Hold on a second. La la la, because I got out of the YouTube. -y. There we go, going live. There we go. Um, sorry for the tense. Oh, nip, I'm not even worried about that. Grammar. Oh my God, how dare you? <laughs> so, um, do you guys have any last minute questions of how my brain works when I plan? Like, if you were going to try to plan something uh, for one of these trips, what are the things you want to know about uh, for specifically Disney or Universal? You know, or what it, what did you have a really amazing uh, plan that, you, you know, something that came out really well that you physically planned doing or something that by fluke really cool happened? 
you know, what are your favorite moments for that? So, you know, if you have uh, thoughts about that or last minute questions, um, I figured since it looks like it's really just the three of us for right now, that uh, we'll probably close it up closer to an hour and we're just about to hit an hour right now. So if you have last minute questions, I'm, I'm looking at the screen. Well, here's the problem with waiting till the construction takes a break, because Julie said she'll wait till the construction takes a break. Um, unfortunately, they're going to continue to construct. Now, 2021 is the 50th anniversary, and that's when most of this should be done. So the Mickey Minnie roller coaster will be done. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will be open. And I think that's the biggest thing, and Toy Story Land is already open. So that's Hollywood Studios. At Epcot, they're building the Ratatouille ride and the Guardians of the Galaxy. And Ratatouille, I think, is next year and Guardians of the Galaxy in 21. I think that's what the game plan is. Um, then uh, that's Epcot. Uh, Magic Kingdom. They're not building per se in Magic Kingdom right now, but I guarantee you they'll probably be starting something up soon. There were things they were talking about. It, really, we're not going to know what the, the latest greatest is until D23. Uh, let me see. Sorry, the yeah, the, the extra magic hours by staying on property, getting those extra magic hours is great. Being in there, you know, Drew and I got at, uh, you know, got to the park at about 7 a.m. on one of the Christmas morning days before anything kind of existed. Park physically opened at 7 a.m. We walked on to one or two rides and then met, got, met our tour. Actually, one ride and then shopping. So we had some time for both. Um, but we might go sooner if my dad invites me. He's in the DVC. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, going to, on DVC. I, I'm. I would love to stay in one of the DVC properties, you know, especially if you had enough points to do like something with the kitchen. You know, it's kind of fabulous. I've been since they changed DAC to GAC. DAC to GAC. You, Disney's. I have no idea what DAC to GAC is. If you can translate one of those, I will probably figure that out, Miss Julie. Um, but yeah, extra magic hours if you can afford to stay on property, the bell and whistle of that and the transfer guest assistance card to do. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, unfortunately people took advantage of it and did stupid stuff. And we, we, I don't have a whole lot of respect for the people using the system, abusing the system for people that, that help that keep other people being able to, to do it. Um, so animal kingdom, I think has gotten, well, they, they're redoing right now the, um, conservation station, which is why Drew and I didn't go there this last time. Um, and I would love to see that get itself up and, and running again. I want to go check that out and see what they've changed. Maybe I'll do some of that on my trip. Um, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Magic Kingdom, and Animal Kingdom. So yeah, the big parks right now, when we, Pandora was the big thing for animal kingdom. And now you've got, the uh, the Hollywood Studios and Epcot getting the big build ups for for the fiftieth. Uh, we needed the flexibility of GAC. Generally, spent about two hours a day in the park, but could not plan ahead even which park. Yeah, uh, and I understand that. And like I said, that morning of you can you can plan some fast passes. Uh, but if you've got if you've got that pass that allows you to say we're going to do this and come back in an hour or something, that will help. Uh, and we'll we'll. Re Require less planning. Now, the other thing is you can plan fast passes and you can just cancel them the day of. You can cancel them five minutes in. You know, uh, we don't want that one anymore. And you can go onto the app and onto your phone and get rid of it. And if you do that, then somebody else can pick them up and use them. And it doesn't, it's not going to cost anything. It comes with the ticket. It no, no other, you know, nothing to help you there. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Um it's like I said, you make the dream plan and you expect to throw it out the window. So you make the dream plan to say, this is what rides I hope that we would like to do. I know these are the ones people really kind of want to do. And then the morning of, if you go, oh my God, she's freaking out. Uh, oh my God, this is a bad day. Oh my God, we cannot go to that park now. That morning you just cancel them. Just cancel the fast passes. The, the dining reservations, that's going to be your harder thing. Um, and if you're concerned that that won't, but even if one person goes to the meal and says, I'm going to eat the meal and the other people aren't, I've never seen them charge them for something like that. Yeah. Well, like I said, so as I was, I was just addressing as I, your, your comment popped up. So the, the quick service, you can just walk up to no problem. The 
uh, a lot of the Disney Springs restaurants, you know, Blaze Pizza, Deluxe Burger, Polite Pig, all of those really are walk up, order your food, and then sit down and they bring it to you. Uh, Cooks of Dublin has the same, a lot of the same foods as Raglan Road, but it's their quick service. Um, and at Disney Springs, you have a better chance of getting a walk up reservation. You can try, like I said, that morning, or you can try to walk up and see what's available, but it depends when you go. Because of what you are dealing with in your specific situation, I would say don't go Christmas. And if you can avoid doing the summer months when they get their most packed, yeah, that would make life easier. You know, if you can do a January or early February, if you can do September, right when the kids start going back to school, I know that's harder for you given the age ranges you're talking about. But if you can uh, play with one of those, you've got a lot of opportunity. Um, and here's the, now here's the other thing for you. If you stay at a Disney Vacation Club and you do one of the ones with the kitchen, you got a fridge, you got you got a stove. Do your meals in that in your your room. Do it in the DVC and 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 cook and do the stuff there. Why not? Uh, then then you're not tied to anything, and it's just the fast passes which don't cost change, you know. And and Disney, they're trying to they're trying to keep people from abusing the system. Because there were basically what would happen is someone would make a reservation at three different restaurants and then pick which one they wanted to do that day and not cancel the others. So people who want to table suddenly couldn't eat at these places. Um, be smart, be respectful, call. And I've had, I've had more than one occasion where a, re a reservation has been canceled for me uh, by guest services because something went awry and they didn't charge me. I've, I've yet to be charged for those, those fees because I'm honest with them and there are legitimate reasons that I'm canceling because I really would want to do the reservation. Uh, that's all you can do. Um, and you have less chance. And, oh, here's another thing, Julie, if you want to stay and eat at one of the restaurants at Disney Springs, instead of booking through the Disney experience, book through open table. Cause a lot of those restaurants, a number of those restaurants, not all of them do allow you to make reservations just with open table and open table does not charge you if you cancel five minutes beforehand. So that might be your go-to is looking at doing more meals, not necessarily in the parks or doing quick service in the parks, but then doing um, your sit downs at places like Disney Springs, which is the mall and is a little kind of more open. Um, and, and using that, I, th I think that would end up alleviating that stress for you. Again, here's how I adjust my schedule and what I do based on the people's needs. Um, rarely use the kitchen other than breakfast. Yeah, I know. I, I've done, I've used the kitchen once and that was that day I kind of got sick and then we had to cancel our meal and we all went back to hit a grocery store and then we cooked in the room. Um, yeah, you do not. And, and I can tell you right now, as bad as Christmas was 10 years ago, it is, it's worse. I mean, Drew can even tell cause he's done this three different trips with me. It's significantly worse now. I, I absolutely would not recommend it at all. Um, the charge for the kids at DVC or Christmas. A Boston cream donut yogurt. Does it taste like Boston cream? Does it taste like yogurt? Does it taste like chocolate? I'm assuming it's a chocolate with a vanilla custard, like a chocolate swirl and a vanilla custard. That would be my guess. Um, not that that has anything to do with Disney. So, yeah, exactly. All right. So, I think at this point, unless there's something specific you guys want to ask me about, I'm going to close this one for tonight, um, but I appreciate you guys coming and listening and talking with me. Um, we have Sammy who's been uh, enjoying the uh, conversation and watching at a distance. Um, yeah. Let, let me know. You, you can let me know back on Facebook. doesn't have to be here. Uh, or you can always comment below. Uh, like I said, if you guys have learned anything today, you've enjoyed it, you know, go ahead, hit the like button. Uh, helps me. Uh, and, and uh, Drew, I know is already subscribed. Julie, if you are not, if you want to subscribe, go ahead and hit the little subscribe button again. You know, I'm at 61 people. I have to hit a thousand before it really does a whole lot for me, but please feel free to join in. And, uh, so sour Boston cream filling instead of sweet. Wow. Okay. Um, you're very welcome, Drew. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed, uh, you guys can take this over to Facebook if you really need to keep talking, but um, that's about it. I thank you. If you guys have ideas for new topics, things you want to know about, 
uh, in terms of uh, Universal or or Disney or you know tra 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 traveling in the area, et cetera, et cetera, um, or random, you know, Ooh, what are you looking forward to? Kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, just just uh, drop a message in the comments below afterwards, like the bottom comments rather than the side live chat comments, uh, or just drop me a, a message through Facebook and. Uh, you know, like I said, this came as an idea from somebody else who really was following the channel, was interested. So let me know, and uh, we'll take it from there. Why does Universal have so many rides the same? Oh, okay. Yeah, like like the screened rides and this different. Okay, um, I can I can pop the pop that into my list of stuff. It's going to be a lot of opinion on my part and stuff I've heard from random sources that may not be totally accurate, but we can we can pop that as a possible conversation. Yeah. Yes. I, I simulators make me ill. I know. I know. Um, but cool. All right. Well, so I'm going to close this off for tonight. We're, we're at about a, an hour and 10 minutes, which is kind of par for the course. Um, like I said, send me messages if you want to know more stuff later. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.